Business is simple. It's just not easy. We focus on three things to help you run and grow your business more easily. Talent, sales, and how to scale. This is the Talent, Sales, and Scale Show. Hey everyone, Brian Whittington here with this episode of the Talent, Sales, and Scale Show. And I have Janet McKee on here, and she is the CEO and founder of SaunaView Latin. We'll get a little bit more in, de- in, in depth with that. So not Santa, but SaunaView, where we can embrace a better life. So that's where she's a CEO and founder. She's also author of a book that brought us together through a, a local organization we're with. Uh, the University of Pittsburgh has the Institute for Entrepreneurial Excellence. And Janet was kind enough to do a talk there. And that's where I ran into her. Um, and, and she wrote the book on the topic of today, how to achieve stressless success. So welcome to the show, Janet. Thank you, Brian. I'm so honored and thrilled to be here today with you. I very much appreciate that. So um, let's dive right into it. And the, the question I always ask is, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? You wrote a book, right? Yeah. Uh, you have your master's degree and everything else. You've been doing this for a while. Um, you know, what makes you the expert on it? Why should we, we, why should we trust you on achieving a stressless, successful life? Well, Brian, let's see. I worked in two Fortune 500 companies after getting my MBA at the University of Pittsburgh, and I climbed those corporate ladders very rapidly, faster than any of my peers. But those high pressure, high stress positions caused me to hit a wall. I literally, through corporate burnout from all the stress and pressure, landed in the hospital with an autoimmune disease that the doctors could not resolve and they gave me no hope. Hmm. I had to get myself out of the hospital and learn how to heal my body naturally. And against what everything that they told me was possible, I did. And that inspired me to then go to Columbia University to study holistic health and wellness. And from that, we learned from all of these great medical doctors from around the world on how lifestyle affects our overall well being and what to do about it. But I went even deeper and studied aspects of psychology because I wanted to understand why did some people seem to flow through life and they follow these suggestions and they do great and some people do not. Like what was going on, even though they had the same information available to them. And as I was doing that, I was working with clients having incredible success and helping them resolve health and wellness challenges. I then hit the next wall of my life, which was my husband of 26 years walked out, left me at the brink of financial disaster and heartbroken. Well, I literally was at rock bottom in my life. I mean, not only did I experience a serious health challenge where the doctors gave me no hope, but I recovered from that through natural ways. I then was experiencing incredible heartbreak, our family ripped apart. And I was at the brink of financial disaster because all of the properties that I built and invested in while having great success in the corporate world, a few years before my husband left, he put liens on all of these properties that I developed to support an SBA loan for a business that at the time he left was failing. I literally was facing bankruptcy and not only was I feeling like I was standing on thin ice because everything I had developed and built was crumbling, but I felt like the roof above my head was a house of cards because he also put a lien on the home where me and our son lived. So everything was literally falling apart. Doesn't sound very stressless yet. (laughs) No. So I spent studying prior to this about psychology and mindset and how we need to have positive thinking, you know, all of that. But that doesn't work when you're facing incredible, stressful situations like I was. I was trying to force positive thoughts, but I wasn't getting results. I began to dig deeper and play around with ideas. And that's when I made the incredible discovery that I'm going to share with you and your audience today. It's not about mindset. It's not actually at all. 
because you might be trying to force a positive thought, but if you're not feeling it, you're still feeling the fear, anxiety, worry, even though you're trying to force something positive, you're giving off an energy of fear, anxiety, and worry, which is stress. And stress and struggle build walls of resistance. And we're all taught that, right? When I was in the corporate world, oh, you got to stress and struggle to achieve success. You got to have grit and grind, right? We even know books written about this. And there are a million books written about the positive thinking and positive mindset. Well, I discovered something far deeper, far more powerful that actually works. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Okay. So you, you hooked us in. We're in. So uh, well, <laughs> I guess, so one thing that I'm pleased to hear is that positive thinking alone didn't allow you to see results because I, I, I'm always fearful that people come on here and like, no, you just have to think right. And then there's the, you know, the book, the secret, and you just have to lay it out there. And then there's no work that goes along with it. So they have this, this idea. And what I found is, and I, I'd look for you to unpack this, People are in love with the idea of success. They're just not up for the effort that it takes. And that effort, to, in my mind, might be, I need new skills, I need new knowledge, or whatever the case may be. It's not necessarily hard work. So I unpack that a little bit. So if it's not about mindset, if it's not about positive thinking, and, and you're, you're you're making me question my grit, right? Because we've we've heard studies and seen studies that grit is the number one characteristics of successful people that resilience to continue on through this much like you did because I, I gotta say that's grit to get from where you were to here I call that grit so can you help us unpack that a little bit please oh you said so many important things and yes yeah, so let me go through everything that you just said first of all you said well there's so many books out there and the secret the movie the secret that all say you just need to imagine what, you know, think about what you want and have positive thinking. Well, all of that is up here, right? Well, I can think about what I want and I can think positive thoughts, but we're going to separate what goes on up here and what actually is coming from here. And let me explain that. But first, number two, what you said is, but everybody out there, they know about success and they want success, but they're afraid of the effort. That was the next thing you said. And that is the big mistake. And so many people hold back on, maybe they've achieved some success. And I did through stress and struggle and grit and grind. I did achieve success. I was incredibly successful in the corporate world, but I paid a high price in my health and my marriage, right? Everything. So people often have achieved some level of success, but they're afraid to go to the next level, to reach for the next level because they, they believe they have to pay a high price. Stress and struggle is not the way you get to success. And those people that have achieved success through stress and struggle and grit and grind have no idea the level of success that they could experience once they apply what I'm going to share today. Stress and struggle and grit and grind, yes, that'll get you right up that ladder and you're gonna climb and you're gonna fight and you're gonna get somewhere. And that's fine. But that's why you're afraid to go higher because you have given so much of yourself. But if you would understand that all that struggle builds walls of resistance. It's resistance, that's what wears us out. That's why we're so exhausted by the end of the day. We're trying too hard. All of that resistance blocks solutions and opportunities that literally will flow to you. Things will land in your lap that you could have never created through thought alone, through stress and struggle alone, through grit and grind. And trust me, I'm going to go through that deeper as we go through this today. But number three, so you said, what about all these books and the secret? Well, why isn't everybody successful then? Why doesn't everybody have everything they want in life, multi-million dollar mansions all over the world, money in the bank, right? Yeah, if we those... have the movie and we have the books, why aren't we experiencing yeah. it? Because we're missing a key point. Yeah, and those people would say, well, you haven't tried hard enough or you haven't had an open enough mind enough. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious what you're about to say here. 
And the third thing you said is, well, wait a minute, studies have shown that people with grit get further in life. And this is a key thing. For some people, a challenge, let's take the word challenge. They roll up their sleeves. They can't wait. They love a good challenge. And some people, challenge is, oh no, another challenging situation that I have to deal with and I have to, you know, struggle through. So the word challenge is a thought, it's a mind set. There's a challenge. But what does it feel like to you? That's the difference. For some people, they love a good challenge. They can't wait to overcome this challenge. And some people, they're scared to death of challenges. Same thing with the word grit. People, so grit is a word. It's a four letter word. Isn't that interesting? But what does it feel <laughs> like to you? Right? What does it feel like to you? If it feels hard, if it feels like something you dread, what kind of a result are you going to get? But if it feels invigorating, if you love continuing to strive and accomplish more, that's a different feeling. It's your energy. This is the missing piece in what everybody out there speaks about and writes about. Okay. It's not about your mindset. It's about your mood. All right. So I'm going to a marked energy we're going to come back on that one so because people might be like that's a little woo woo so i want to i'll come back to that in a second now what i think i just heard you say and a little light bulb uh -huh, went off is this feelings are neither good nor bad challenges are neither good nor bad it, it seems like what you're suggesting here it's how we choose intentionality or maybe um, I'll come to that in a second, but it's how, how we choose to view that. Do we view it as a, oh, there we go again, right? Woe is me, I'm victim. Or do we choose to view it as, huh, this will be interesting. I can't wait to see how this all turns out. This will be fun. And either way, it's a choice of how you're viewing this exact thing. Is that, am I off on that? That's perfect. But what I want you to notice is how each one felt. Okay. One feels restrictive. One feels expansive. And it's it, the way you feel that is the, a reflection of the energy that's emanating from you. And, and bear with me because I have to say one thing so we don't forget. You said that's energy sounds woo-woo. Well, let me tell you, and there is a section in my book, Shasta of Success, that talks about the science behind this. Quantum mechanics is a theory within quantum physics where they found that everything is energy. Everything at the subatomic level within the atom, the smallest particle within everything is not solid, it's actually fluid. Everything, even this hard book within the, within the atom is fluid. And what they found in the famous double slit experiment where scientists were sending, they were sending electrons, but imagine light beams through two slits. It was called the double slit experiment. And you would imagine that when you set, send light beams through two slits on the back wall, you're gonna see light in two lines, Okay. right? And when they focused on the two slits, these electrons went through in that pattern of lines. When they turned away and were not focused on the slits, they got a random pattern. This was the first time that quantum physicists discovered, much to their disbelief, that the focused energy of the observer of the experiment affected the outcome of experiments. So what am I saying? That's a lot of scientific gobbledygook. It's better than woo-woo, isn't it? <laughs> so, but here's the point. The point is what they discovered, number one, is that everything is energy. Number two, that the energy that emanates from you can impact the world around you. Okay, so let me get some clarification if I'm not gonna uh, uh, 
throw your train of thought there. So the energy that emanates from you. So in that example, the, uh, are you suggesting that the energy that was um, emanating from those scientists was that their preconceived notion or their focus, their intentionality? Is that what you're suggesting was their energy? Well, I might get a little bit deep here, but this is what's so incredible about my discovery. And I have yet to hear anybody explain this. Some scientists have tried to replicate that study. Some of them got results, some of them did not, the same results. Because I'm discovering that it's not just in here. The scientists that were just looking at it from a logical standpoint are different than the scientists that were emotionally involved in the scientific study. Those that their energy, their feelings and their energy are more involved than just their head. And so, so the point there is that science has begun to discover this idea that everything is energy and that we have an influence from our energy to affect what's around us. As a matter of fact, John Hopkins University, one of the lead researchers did a whole uh, paper on this and he quotes, he has a quote stating that we have more power within our energy than we ever thought before. So the idea there is there's science behind this, but the difference again is always going to be the people that stay in their head versus the people that put their heart and soul into something. Does that make sense? Yeah, so let me um, unpack it here a, a little bit. So I, I, once more, I'm, gonna, I'm trying to allow all to hear, and I, I'd really challenge you, those that are listening, and maybe this is like, ah, this is a little bit far afield or far-fetched. Okay, acknowledge that, but then ask yourself, what happens if she's right? What happens if this is true? What happens if everything that I understand might not be the whole picture? So let me just ask you to open up your mind to that possibility of what if, and let's, let's, let, let's play in the land of what if. So what you, if I take this in more of a practical, maybe more everyday terminology, is what you're suggesting that the, the scientists were actually playing the role of a scientist, it's not, science is not fact. Right. The scientific method isn't this is fact. Uh, if it's a fact, then it becomes a law. Right. Newton's law of physics. That's a law. Science is experimentation. It's playing in the land of what if. And so what you're suggesting is it's not just their mind of I have this preconceived notion. This is what's going to happen. But rather, um, you know what? I think this is what's happened, but what if I'm wrong? Let's look at some other angles. And, and so they, they get curious and they experiment. And for that, they found new hypothesis or hypothesize or whatever that right, right word is um, for new options to experiment and explore and play scientist again. I mean, in, yeah. in, if that practical language align with what you're saying? Yeah, so we're, let me say two things here. Again, I love yeah. this. You're brilliant with what you're saying. So first of all, I love the way you describe those scientists that are open-minded. They're like, well, let's explore this. What kind of energy is somebody that wants to explore and they're open to possibilities versus somebody that says, I know this to be a fact and that's the way it is and nothing's going to convince me otherwise, right? That's restricted. At, that feels restricted versus the scientist that's like, I'm curious i want to explore so so that's the new see where i keep going with that right. there's a different feeling you get but now let's apply this to practical life the point there was that there's science behind what i'm talking about but my discovery went further and it has changed everything for me and everyone i work with i work with clients one-on-one -on -one. i do a lot of corporate talks with groups we're going to talk about sales what happens. so let me give that as an example because you work a lot with sales people correct Yes, absolutely. Okay. So one of my clients was the CEO of a company, it was a couple hundred million dollar company. And she was dealing with, she was actually dealing with a, a struggle in her life. It was actually her health. And she had this pain in her abdomen. 
and we were working on the thing. She said, Janet, you know, everything's going great in my business and other aspects of my life, even though it's really stressful at work, but I'm really concerned to have this pain in my abdomen and I'm so scared. I think that I have a serious situation that's developing. And, and she said, but don't worry. I know all about positive thinking and the mind and body connection. So I go to bed at night and I say positive affirmations to myself. And I said, Monica, what do you say to yourself? She said, I go to bed at night and I say, I'm healthy. I'm healthy. I'm healthy. I realized this was actually the moment of clear discovery, Brian. I said, wait a minute. She's forcing a positive thought about something she's fearful about, but I'm feeling her fear. And her situation was getting worse. It was, she was saying a positive thought, but I could feel her fear. So what I did is instead I said, okay, Monica, wait a minute. You're trying to leap too far too fast. You don't believe you're healthy and you're trying to force a thought that you are, but you're not feeling it because you don't believe it. And we've heard that about beliefs. So what I said is imagine you're on a ladder and right now you're on the low rung of a ladder. And what we want to do is just climb one rung at a time. You want to gain a grip on the rung and find your footing. If you try to leap from the bottom rung of a ladder to the top rung of a ladder in one leap, what's gonna happen? You're gonna fall off the ladder and break your leg or worse. So we're gonna take one step at a time. So I said, okay, Monica, you're a smart woman, right? Yes, I am. And your body is experiencing pain, but that's your body showing you that something's out of balance. Yes, it is. Well, your body telling you that something's out of balance is a good thing because now you can search for solutions. Yes, it is. You see what we were doing? But we, these were thoughts that feel good, little by little. Now, if we go too far and it starts to feel uncomfortable, I say you get off the ladder and you walk away from the subject. Walk away, do anything and everything you'd love to do that feels better. Dance and sing, get out in Mother Nature, pet your dog or walk your dog, you know, prayer, meditation, gratitude, whatever that is that makes you feel better. Then when you revisit the subject that you're fearful about or upset about, you have more openness because you just feel better about something else, then you revisit it. So when you're stressed, you lose blood flow from your brain. Not only does that affect your health, you, you get inflammation and suppress your immune system and blah, 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 but you actually lose blood flow from your brain when you stress and struggle. So how can you think clearly to find a solution if you're stressed and worried about something? right? So when you walk away from the subject, and you do something you just love to do, and you come back, you have more blood flow to your brain. And now you feel a little bit better. And now let's revisit the problem that we want to solve. Okay, so little by little, and let me tell you, as soon as we had her realize that the pain she was feeling was a good thing, because her body was telling her that something is getting off tra track for her, something's out of balance. Do you know the pain started to go away? Just by her recognizing that, wait a minute, my body's telling me I need to, I need to, to do better with it, right? So this is what you actually have described as resilience. And now I'm gonna apply it to salespeople. People that look at a challenge differently. We, there's things that happen all the time, all the time in the world around us. And there's a lot going on right now. There are a lot of concerning things. So are you going to focus on everything in a way that feels bad and upsets you and is concerning? Or are you going to say, okay, challenges always bring opportunities. Challenge is actually a good thing, right? When we have something that's wrong, it fuels our desire for better. But as long as that desire comes from a hope and anticipation that we will create better then we will, because that feels good. So anyway, this CEO, Monica, invited me because she was getting such great results. She couldn't even believe what was happening with her, not only with her health, but in other areas of her life, because she was learning to do things that felt more expansive, that felt better. And she didn't try to force positive thoughts about something she was fearful about, right? She was just working on the way she felt, her energy. She invited me into her 
meet with her salespeople because this was last year after COVID hit. There's a manufacturing company, by the way. Their sales plummeted and then they went flat because everybody was shut down. Their, their suppliers, their, their clients. I mean, it was a disaster for her business. And the salespeople were really feeling stressed. They were feeling hopeless because they felt victims of what was happening in the world. There was nothing they could do to solve it. So she brought me in to meet with her salespeople. And I taught them about the power of their energy, that it doesn't matter what's happening around you. All that matters is what's happening inside of you. And so what we did is we played around with these ideas to not only frame things in a different way, that's part of resilience, which is a whole chapter in my book, Stress and Success about resilience, which is what you refer to, by the way, with when you describe things to me, but also just to do things that help them expand and elevate themselves inside. Brian, they invited me back two weeks later. Now these people weren't exactly sure that this was all going to do anything, right? Yeah, and they if you put this in, a, yeah, and if you put this in manufacturing terms, there's a lot of engineers in here that is extremely logical oriented. So my the resistance in that room, I would have loved to have seen that one. So keep going. The day before I'm supposed to come back for the two week regroup, I get a call from the vice president of sales. And he said, Janet, I know you're coming tomorrow, but I just want to warn you. And I'm thinking, oh no, right? Then I'm going to present something that's going to shock you. And I said, what's that, Dennis? He said, our sales, without anything changing in the environment, we're still in the midst. This was last August. We're still in the midst of the pandemic. Everybody's still on half shutdown and on and on and on. Our sales, I'm well, like, this is a true story. General Carbide is a company I'm even allowed to say. She's willing to tell the story. Her sales went like this. What changed? Nothing changed on the outside. What changed were these salespeople were open and willing to do what I taught. No, I'm just giving you the tip of the iceberg solution here today because I, I spent four hours teaching them this, right? They applied. Now, they weren't perfect at it. I don't, you don't need to be perfect at this. You don't need to be totally expanded and elevated and feel joy and, and you know, exhilaration when there are challenges. But if you can even just do this a little bit, a little shift gets you huge results. Their sales skyrocketed, Brian, and nothing changed. We all think we're victims of everything that happens around us, right? Oh, we're victims of our spouses making us unhappy. If only my spouse was different. If my boss was different, right? I would do better at work or I would be happier or more motivated. We blame everything, the government, the economy. We blame everything around us. If people only realized that you have more power within the palm of your hands than you ever knew before. And I know this is the first time you're hearing this because I made this discovery and I, I'm trying to get this out into the world. But this is it. And so let me tell you, I was facing a really brutal divorce. It was really bad, okay? All of my properties, I hired the most expensive attorneys that I could find. The most brilliant, high-powered attorneys, they all concluded, Janet, you're never gonna be able to keep your properties. There's nothing you can do. The liens on those properties with this SBA, there's nothing. I decided to no longer fight against that situation. I decided to work on me. I started working on me, finding more reasons to feel good. Whatever that is, I spent more time dancing to music I love, spent more time in mother nature. My ex-husband calls me on the phone and said, Janet, we're not doing any good with these attorneys. Let's get together and see if we can work this out ourselves. To make a long story short, we come up with a marital settlement agreement where both of us split everything. We keep each thing we each developed and I'm able to keep all of my properties. The attorneys told me after that, they can't figure out how I did it, that I moved to mountains. I moved mountains, they said were impossible. All I did was shift me and I get a different response from my ex-husband. 
we get a different response from the SBA loan company. This is so powerful. And I kind of, I tell a story in my book is kind of funny and you'll really might think it's ridiculous, but I own a farm, as you know, I, I, I live in Pittsburgh, but I own a 52 acre organic farm out in the Laurel Mountains. And we were losing money. The farm was, we were trying to grow produce and we were taking, costing more money to grow the produce we were making, selling it. And meanwhile, I'm dealing with this divorce. There's not the time to have a property that was struggling. And on my way to the farm, there was a billboard for a bankruptcy attorney. And every time I had a drive to the farm, I had a drive past this billboard for bankruptcy attorney. And meanwhile, I'm dealing with a really horrible divorce where I was facing bankruptcy. It was like a knife in my heart every time I drove past the sign. But again, I just kept working on myself and working on myself and finding reasons to feel good, got away from the subject that upset me. One day I'm driving to the farm. I used to look away from the bankruptcy sign. I would replace the word bankruptcy with bank riches. I would say bank riches, bank riches, bank riches while I was driving past the sign because it hurts so much to look at the sign. Well, one day driving to the farm, the sign was gone. Okay, so people said, Jan, that had nothing to do with you. You're right. So maybe the, the guy went out of business. Maybe he retired. Maybe the bankruptcy attorney went bankrupt. I don't know. All I know is that sign was there for 20 years. I kicked me. It disappears. Uh, and let's, let's take a couple of things out of this. So um, one, you cannot change a person, you cannot change the economy, you can't do anything, right? What Janet is pointing out here is she chose to change herself and how she viewed the economy, the person, and, and so a lot comes out of that. So my guess is, and I, I don't know if you'd agree with this or not, my guess is because you've focused on you, you're no longer victim, I now can do something, so I have a sense of control, and if I feel like I have control, then I can do something. And then because you're likely happier, better version of yourself, maybe your soon to be ex is like, okay, maybe I can work with her. The communication is better. It's like all of these small little things start to come about. And the other side of this too, is there's a difference between stress and a stress, if that's the right pronunciation of it. Stress is horrible and a, and a, a real challenge because we look at it as horrible and a challenge where this stress makes us, um, better and smarter and more challenged and, and, and we'll be able to do things with it and think actually even more clearly. So, uh, and then think of it this way, if you're with us, if you're with your significant other and you're having a major fight, when do you come up with the zingers to really get them back? It's after you walk away, whenever you've calmed down and you can think again, right? So let's not do that. Let's think about the good things, but what you dwell on is the direction that you'll go into. So you really, what are you thinking about? And if it's all negativity, well, guess what? Congratulations, you're gonna go that route because you've gotten exactly what you wanted. Whereas if you say, you know what? I'd rather this, then you start to find the gap and correct me if I'm wrong here, Janet, but this is what I'm catching here. I start to get that gap of where I'd like to be, or better yet, who I'd like to be as I'm in that place. And I start to find out all the gaps. Is it skill gaps? Is it knowledge gap? Is it, you know, people around me gap? What are those gaps? And then I can start systematically figuring it all out to get there. And if I'm not mistaken, and you know this better than I, Janet, there's a lot to do with this in the subconscious. Because if I think about a challenge right before I go to bed and I go, well, this would be interesting. Oftentimes, I'm going to wake up with the solution because your subconscious is really thinking through it. So I don't know if that's true, but I've heard that before. Um, thoughts on that piece? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh, you say so many things. I have to make a list of things because it, you, you have incredible nuggets of gold in everything you just said, and you always do. You're, you're very brilliant at this, I must say. So I first appreciate of all, you very much. Thank you for that. Yeah. So first of all, exactly. All of the challenges in my life led me to who I am today. I am happier and more fulfilled than I've ever been in my life. But it's because of all the challenges I went through made me who I am today. So what do I do with that? Okay, so the challenges are good. So the next time I'm faced with a challenge, I step back and say, okay, wait a minute. I wonder what good is gonna come of this. And you can almost get excited Everything happens for a reason. So that's resilience, is looking at everything, framing a different way. 
but that's how to feel differently about a challenge. Say, I wonder what this challenge is showing me or teaching me. What good may come of this? Because all of my past challenges have led me to some insight that has helped me in other aspects of my life, right? It's, it's incredible that way. But here's what's really key to what you're saying. And this is what I wanna point out. You really have to become aware of how you're feeling. It's not just your thoughts. That yes, I could say that, let's say I'm facing a challenge. I could say, oh yeah, challenges are good. But if you're gripped in anxiety, you're blocking the solutions from coming to you. But let me again apply this point to a sales story. I have a client of mine who is in a sales position at a very respect, well-respected company in the technology field. And he was doing so well, having such great success that they were bringing on more um, salespeople in his department and his higher up said, we want you to train everybody because you're so good and you're such a good leader, right? How great that is. Well, he's working really hard at bringing in more revenue for the business and getting more leads for the business, right? He's working really hard, really hard. Well, one of these new employees is not nearly as talented, not nearly as skillful. Like he would get on the phone and he would make huge mistakes and so forth. But the higher ups decide to give all the inbound leads to this new guy. They're handing them to him because he needs help. Well, all the rest of the salespeople, including my client, said, this isn't fair. They're like stressing and struggling and striving to get leads for the business. And they're handing all the inbound leads to this other guy that's not even nearly as talented. So I said to my client, okay, wait a minute. That might appear to be unfair, but let's dig in deeper. Tell me about this other person, this new guy. Tell me about his attitude and his personality. And he said, well, he's just kind of like nonchalant. He's like, hey, he comes in early. He's always like happy and positive and he doesn't worry about, he just kind of like goes with the flow. Bingo. He did not take the same energy of everyone else of stressing and struggling to try to get leads. He was like, hey, I'm gonna hope for the best. All of the higher ups give this guy all the inbound leads, the free leads, right? Was it, what was it? Yes, he took action by applying for this job and coming in early every day and giving his best effort, but he was like open to possibilities. Everybody else was struggling. So is it unfair that this guy's handed all the leads or was it his energy? Yeah, and, and that goes, um, my sense on that, on that particular story would be that he showed uh, hard work, which the higher ups are gonna see. He comes in early, always has a positive attitude, right? Because people wanna be around other positive people. I'm curious though, if he had the right energy just to play advocate here to, to kind of be difficult, why wasn't he seeing the success then that these other people were? If this was, if he had the right energy, I guess the curious question, the skeptic would say, well, then why wasn't he successful? He wasn't successful at first, right? He was like stumbling because he didn't have it, but, it, but because he was calm about it and open, he's not super successful. What do you mean? He's like, he's getting all the leads handed to him. He's, he's exceeding his quota every month. But let me tell you, my client was incredibly successful. He was the leader of the group. He was being promoted. He was, right? But he came, he came to be frustrated because he's like, wait a minute, this guy is being handed everything. Like these are the free leads. Like that's, like, that's unfair. Because this, that my client was knowledgeable. He was incredibly brilliant. He had the skill set but he was still str stressing and struggling through getting those leads. It was hard work to get the leads. That's why they didn't hand him the inbound leads. 
that's an energetic thing. I, I don't know if you're following that. So it's not, not skill and knowledge that brings about success. Yes, that helps. It's good to have the knowledge and, but it's so important to have the energy. The energy brings about more results than any focus, thought, and effort. So let me explain that. I teach, I'm one of 200 in the world certified in high performance by the High Performance Institute. That's part of my coaching practice. I teach people how to achieve greater success and become high performers. And those are very mechanical, methodical things that we go through. When I layer the energy concept on top of it, we get incredible results. So one of the concepts in high performance is productivity. We all know all the facts of productivity, right? You got to have your to-do list. You got to know what your priorities are. You got to have un uninterrupted focus time, right? Turn off your phone, turn off your email, shut your office door, focus on those things so you can check off everything on the list and be really productive because productivity has the biggest impact on your bottom line. But that's not productivity in my book. In my book is results. What kind of results are you getting from the effort that you're putting out? Sure, you can check things off a your to-do list, but tell me what results you're getting on the back end. So how do we truly increase productivity to bring in results? Every time you take action, you don't just hurry up and check things off a list. Every time you take action, every time you pick up a phone, every time you go into a meeting, every time, whatever it is you're taking action on, you first elevate and expand you, your energy the way you feel, then you take action. I have a thing with that client before he gets on the phone. He was at the beach once and he saw that blue, big blue open sky. Uh, he said, that's what I think of this sky. I said, okay, every time split second before you pick up the phone and call a prospective client, I want you to be the sky. Be the sky before you pick up the phone. Ever since he started doing that, his numbers are going through the roof. So it's a trigger for him how to expand before taking action. He has to take less action now during the day to get greater results. That's productivity. Who tells you that? Who tells you to expand before taking action? They might say think positive thoughts, but again, you might be like, oh my God, I'm not gonna hit my quota. I'm gonna I'm going to be really good today and you're going to pick up the phone. And you're going to make a phone call, but you're not feeling it. Yeah. We you call that commission breath. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So you yeah. got to feel it now. And, and so from that um, and those out there listening, you know, this to be true because they'll, they'll call it flow, right? How, whatever language you want to call it, call it energy, call it flow, call it in the groove, call it um, whatever. Right. It, it's really that you carry confidence, your tonality changes, your, like you said, your energy changes and you become more charismatic. People want to hang out with you because success begets success. Energy begets energy. So it really is curious how we mirror those around us. And so why not be intentional about you being the one who people want to mirror and emulate by bringing your own energy. So I think in, in summing this up before we do our rapid fire, because we're running out of time, um, it, it really is to sum it up, if I might oversimplify is uh, choose how you want to feel and choose right to get the results that you want. I mean, can I, I sum it up like that? Yeah. So let me sum it up a little bit further. Number one, be aware of how you feel. Don't worry about your thoughts because sometimes a thought is, is, it, is not in alignment with the way you feel about that thought. Just start being aware of what, you know how you can have a sixth sense about somebody when they walk in the room? If they're really angry and just, you're like, ooh, stay away from me. If they're like, oh, this feeling brilliant and confidence, you're like, oh, I gotta hang around that person, right? You have a sixth sense about somebody. That's this energy that's emanating from them. So I just want you to start paying attention to your own. Be aware, number one. Number two, find those things that help your energy expand. Have those tools in your hip pocket. Prayer, meditation, take good care of yourself. Wellness the foundation. Get outside, dance and sing. Get away from the things that are worrying you. 
See, that's where everybody else makes a mistake. You ha- they think you have to think positive thoughts about the thing you're, you're concerned about. No, let it go. What does it feel like to let it go for a while? <sighs> it feels like a breath of fresh air. So have these things in your hip pocket to help you to feel better and then learn to climb the ladder. Little things, little things to help you. Little thoughts that feel better. Gain a grip, find your footing. It's all about being aware of the way you feel. Get out of your head and into your energy is what I explain. Okay, so the, our, our rapid fire, and, and someday it's coming soon, right? I'm going to get like some, some great music to, to get, hit off our rapid fire questions. And I'm going to tweak this, this next question up to be this. I typically ask, what's the, your best business hack for hiring talent or sales or scale? But what I'm going to do is ask you instead, What's your biggest suggestion, your biggest hack on, I don't feel that way and I want to change my feelings? Because again, I can't say I need to change my feelings because then I'm going to push against it and I'm going to put up those blocks. So if we're not feeling it, what's maybe some recommendations or or suggestions on how we can choose to change our feelings? Again, you walk away from the thing that's upsetting you. So you see how you said, well, what if you're not feeling it? You mean on a subject. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm feeling stressed about having to pick up the, the, the phone to make calls because I need to hit quota, right? And, and I'm trying to have positive thoughts. No, I can do it. I've done it in the past, but you're still stressed out. You don't feel it. So I guess that's a that's, that's question. How do you do the control alt delete to reset your feeling? Take a moment when you're, so, you, so number one, you're going to notice you feel uncomfortable. When you feel that discomfort of stress and fear and anxiety, number one is being aware. Number two, you got to find those things. Find something that you love to do and, and, and get away. How about also, I told you my client was at the beach and saw this. Guy. Just imagine for a split second you're at the beach. And the waves and the sun and the seagulls and the sky. That's what I'm saying. You're crowding out that thing that you're stressed out about. And just uh, all that's doing right there is getting more blood flow to your brain. Helping you to expand your energy and then revisit your sales task, your sales job role. So would you kind of say then uh, it's um, acknowledge it? This, well, this is the difference. See, everybody's trying to feel better about the subject that they're concerned about. I'm saying, let it go. Do something else. Just, ah, this is a song you love. And then come back. You're coming back at a higher level. You can't solve the challenge at a low level. The solution to your challenge. The goals you want to achieve are already at a higher vibration level. You got to get to that higher level some way. And if you can't do it on the subject, you do it in some other way. So then when you come back to the subject, you're coming back at a higher level, a more expanded, hopeful level, okay? And this is the hack. The hack is be aware of the way you feel. Be aware of that energy that's emanating from you. It's vibrating from you. Because whatever's emanating from you is what you're going to get back. Whatever you give out, you get back. So what are you giving out? Think of yourself like a radio dial. If you dial to a hard rock station, you're not going to get classical music. If you dial to talk radio, you're not going to get hard rock. So what are you dialing into? Are you dialing into openness and anticipation and and positive anticipation and expectation? And that's what you're going to get back. But you got to find your way. And I work with anyone to help them find their ways that work for them. Everybody has their own way that gets them to dial into a greater way of being. When you dial into a greater way of being, greater things happen for you with less effort. 
Got it. So let me hit that right there because stop being a human doing and start being a human being because, oh, right? Yeah. Be aware of how you're feeling, acknowledge it, stop dwelling on what you'd not want, but rather dwell on who you would like to be, become that person, character, uh, conduct or character precedes conduct. So what's the character that you're looking to become? Now get, let me be clear on something. I'm not saying you never take action. I'm not saying you just sit in your room and meditate and watch the birds fly and think they don't, no, 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 no. But what I'm saying is that being part first, that's where all your power is. Do you see what we're doing? No longer are people victims of what's happening on the outside. They now are being given their power back. What does it feel like to feel empowered? You said the word confidence. What does it feel like to be confident that you now have more power within you? Because that's what you can control. You can't control things around you, but you can control what's going on inside of you. But let me say something even deeper. When you do control what's going on inside of you, play around with it, elevate and expand even a little bit. The things around you change. So you do have control over what happens around you. And that blows people's minds. My husband coming to me and saying, hey, let's work this out. You say, I couldn't control him, but guess what? I did because I changed me. Because I shifted my energy, he came up and said, hey, let's work this out. Do you see that? So you are not a victim. You've got the power. That's getting clear. And if it's not clear to people, please get in touch with me. Or please invite me in to teach a workshop to your leadership team, to your salespeople. You have no idea what is about to happen for everyone who's listening to this. You have no idea. It, it's so powerful. I, and I'm, now I'm bursting at the seams because I, I'm just so excited to have discovered this. And it's really simple. This is far simpler. I'm not asking you to go to Harvard and beat your head against the wall and study for five years and become a PhD and blah, blah, blah. No, it's easier than that. And you have the power right within you, but it takes practice. So just like an athlete, the best athletes in the world, what do they do? They practice every day. The best musicians in the world, what do they do? They practice every day. All I'm asking you is to be aware of this tool and start to play around with it. Start practicing. What can I do? I'm feeling uncomfortable right now because I have to go into this really important meeting. You know what? Before I walk into that meeting, I'm going to take a walk around the block. I'm going to enjoy the beautiful blue sky. I'm going to appreciate the rain, whatever that is. I'm going to think about how much I love my dog. And then I'm going to walk into that meeting. Well, and, and so with that said, let's let's hit this rapid fire because you have a ton, a ton of resources that you can recommend. And there's a number of things that you do even on on um, just out of because you're so passionate about this, which you can clearly hear. Um, so what resources might you recommend that people might want to take advantage of? Thank you, Brian. So I would suggest go to JanetMcKee.com, J-A-N-E-T-M-C-K-E-E.com. On my website, you'll see my blog articles, I have videos, I have other things. I do have a monthly Stressless Success Masterclass and I give everybody a free option to join that at the first month. If you have me in to speak with your organization, I give the whole company free access to that. Otherwise, uh, that's available. There's also, you can contact me for a complimentary strategy session where we talk about what's going on with you and I give you really valuable advice. From that, you can decide if you wanna hire me to work with me, I'm very flexible one-on-one -on -one, or bring me into your group, whether it's a social group, a professional group, your organization. I am dedicating my life to sharing this information with others. JanetMcKee.com. You can communicate with me directly on that website or email me, Janet at JanetMcKee.com or call me 724-417-6695. I'm not bashful. I give out all my contact information because I, I'm here for you. I want the best for you. And I am dedicating my life to making sure that you achieve stressless success. I can't thank you enough, Janet, and take advantage of, of uh, her suggestions there. You can reach out to her on LinkedIn, but trust me, email works better for her. <laughs> uh, well, hey, Janet, um, again, uh, in summing up, um, I think Janet put it really, really well. 
you're not a victim, so don't play the victim. Choose intentionality of how you want to feel. Step away. Dwell on that which you want. Dwell on that which you want like to become. Focus in on that and become that person step by step to the where you're not fighting it anymore. Because if you try to be something that you're not intuitively or subconsciously, you're going to fight against it. So become that person as fast as practicable. And you'll know the pace. You know yourself. Be that self-aware and do something about it. Like Janet said, take action, for goodness sake. Reach out to her, call her. She gave you a bazillion different ways to reach her. So uh, thanks so much. Hey, remember, uh, don't take this for knowledge sake. Take this for knowledge. Uh, take this for application sake. Take some stuff. Apply it. Have a better, more successful, happier life. And let's smile some more. Hey, see everyone. Thanks so much. Thanks again, Janet. Thank you, Brian. You're awesome. Thank You're you so the much. best. Thank you. Be well.